When you were questioned by the sheriff, yes, you never gave the name Simmons. No, we did not. You never described what he looked like. No, we did not. You said all blacks in, look alike. And you said all in words. That's right. Sure did. After more than 44 years, Vincent Simmons is now a free man. Yesterday, a judge ruled he had not received a fair trial back in 1977 when he was convicted of attempted aggravated rape. The decision is partly based on evidence that's been available for years. Our lead national correspondent, David Begno, recently sat down with Simmons' accusers, twins, who were 14 years old back in 1977. Now, he has spoken to Simmons. Vincent served 44 years here at Louisiana State Penitentiary, but he was supposed to serve 100. That was the sentence. For the last 30 or so years, he kept trying to tell judges, I didn't get a fair trial, and here's the information, and they just dismissed him left and right. Get out of here, get out of here. But yesterday, there was a judge who said to him, I believe that you did not get a fair trial. In fact, that judge's daddy, nearly 30 years ago, dismissed Vincent's attempt. But this judge said, your rights were denied, they were violated, and you get a fair trial. And we were there for all of it. Vincent Simmons! Time to let him go, y'all! When the shackled Vincent Simmons arrived at the Avoyles Parish Courthouse in a prison van, he was carrying a Bible. When his accusers, Karen and Sharon Sanders, the twins that he was convicted of sexually assaulting when they were 14 years old, walked to the courthouse, they paused to pray. Simmons had been in prison for 44 years and tried for most of that time to get his conviction overturned. You've done this 16 times at least. <laughs> yes. So this will be 17. Yes. You think this will be the time? Yes, sir. We walked alongside Simmons as he was about to face a judge who had recently examined information that was available in 1977, but it was not presented at his trial. That was information that he and his attorneys believed may have changed his conviction for attempted aggravated rape. It took less than an hour for Judge Billy Bennett to say that there had been a lapse in Louisiana justice in 1977. You free, bro. You free. You free. You free. Done. And that Vincent Simmons deserves a new trial. And that is when the shackles came off of his feet. The district attorney said he will not retry Simmons. His accusers, Sharon and Karen Sanders, now 59 years old, decided to stand down. He went in guilty. He's guilty now. And guess die. what? He will die guilty. You ready? So okay. I'm, oh, I'm ready? happy. Yeah. I got 44 years. All right. Give us his name. When you were questioned by the sheriff, Yes. You never gave the name Simmons. No, we did not. You never described what he looked like. No, we did not. You said all a blacks in, look alike. And you said all in words. That's right. Sure did. This is outrageous. Right to jail. Right away. So how are we to square the fact that that night you couldn't explain anything? You didn't have his name. You didn't know what he looked like. But now you're telling me today, and you testified at trial, that his name was Simmons. That's right. Is it possible? that you picked the wrong man. No, no. When I close my eyes, there's no other face that I see. On May 22nd, 1977, Karen and Sharon Sanders, who are identical twin sisters, told police a black man asked them for a ride and raped them on a desolate road two weeks earlier. The next day, 25-year-old Vincent Simmons was taken into custody as he was walking down the street. The man they identified was 25-year-old Vincent Simmons, who police arrested that day. I'm sitting on the chair and handcuffed. When he gets through, he said, I want you to sign I said, what is that? He said, this is a confession saying that you uh, committed this crime. I said, what crime? He said, I don't even know the white girl. What was the evidence against him? the testimony of the witnesses, the victims. The twins testified that on the night they claimed they were Vincent had told them his last name. Believe it or not, all night long, we called him Simmons. He told us to call him Simmons. More than four decades later, in January 2020, Justin Bonus, a lawyer from Brooklyn, New York, joined Vincent's defense and was immediately skeptical of the prosecution's case. I looked at the discovery, I was like, well, everything they said at trial is a lie. It's all a lie. There's nothing that supports what they say. 
Included in that discovery were the original statements the twins gave to police in 1977. Remember how at trial they said they knew his last name? He told us to call him Simmons. Turns out, when they first spoke to police, they didn't say that. The girls initially went to police, they didn't say the name Simmons? No. What name did they say? They didn't give a name. Karen says they didn't initially give a name to police out of fear. I mean, we were scared of him. And see, I don't know why I didn't. I mean, I Other think it's I was fear. We were, we're afraid of him. Bonus also suggested a possible reason for the twins choosing Vincent from the lineup. In a photo that appears to show the lineup, Bonus noticed that Vincent was the only one wearing handcuffs. When you saw that lineup photo, what'd you think? What? I said, this is crazy. Nuts. Highly suggestive. When you put the cuffs on him, you're telling him that's who we want you to pick. But Charles Riddle, the current district attorney, says that photo was taken after the twins identified Vincent. Report from a doctor, also the coroner, who examined the girls two weeks after the reported rape, did not document any signs of sexual assault. How big a deal do you think the coroner's report plays in this story? Massive. Bonus says the jury should have had the chance to consider all of that at trial. His attorneys, they had nothing. They went in there flying blind with their arms tied behind their back in a boxing match. That's, a, that's literally what it was. So you're telling me the original statements that the girls and Keith gave to police where they could not identify this individual. Right. That was never heard by the jury? Absolutely not. And the medical report from the coroner was never heard by the jury? Right. And the lineup photo, not seen by the jury? No. In the eyes of the people and the Constitution, he is presumed innocent. And when Charles Riddle dismissed that case, that presumption of innocence carries. That's good. What was that moment like for you when you realized that what the judge said meant you were a free man? Yeah. It dawned on me, this is it. You know? Man, we've been waiting all these years for this. You'll turn 70 on Thursday. On Thursday. Did you think you would die in prison? Yes. And I had visions of the prison gates opening up, and I'm walking through them. Are you mad at anyone? No, I'm not mad. So you're not mad at the women? No. I'm not mad at them. I mean that. When I told them I forgive them, that's what I mean. Forgiveness. The judge said several times on the bench, I do not know whether Mr. Simmons is innocent or guilty. Right. Does it bother you that you walk out of here a free man, but with the suspicion by some people that you may still be guilty? Well, I still believe that even though the, I'm out, just like people, people going to be people. And some of them going to say, oh, he's guilty. You know, despite the fact that they had no evidence. But before he could be free, a remarkable thing happened. Louisiana prison officials required that the shackles go back on so he could go back to prison to be processed. I'm just telling you, he's, he's a free man. And though his lawyer pushed back. You can't be in jail tonight. Like that, that's not like a good, that would not be a good thing. The victory! He would load up again and travel another two hours back to Louisiana State Penitentiary, the largest maximum security prison in the nation, where at sunset, Vincent Simmons walked out oh, yeah. of the place he has been held in since he was 25 years old. Hey, man. I won. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The judge said on the bench yesterday, I want to be clear, I'm not telling you that Vincent Simmons is guilty or innocent. I'm just telling you he deserves a new trial. When the district attorney stood up almost immediately and said, Judge, we're not going to retry him, that meant the charges at that moment were dropped. When Vincent walked out of here last night, he said he wanted a crawfish dinner. So he got it. You see, this is that bullshit I'm talking about. They get to fucking lying and saying fucking anything. The facts are fucking clear. First of all, it's like people can't ever hear that a woman could tell a lie about something like this. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. That's ridiculous. Or desperation because, I mean, honestly, think about it. You're humiliated. You're afraid 
like literally afraid that this person is possibly going to be let out on the streets again and might come after you. A lot of women have So that maybe issue. you should say their name, dumbass. But it's just like under duress and fear and wanting to get that person. Right. And 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 don't get it twisted. The police 100% assist and coerce motherfuckers into picking who they want you to pick because they have a tendency to do that if you ever right. look at things very interesting why this motherfucker was in handcuffs and no one else was let me tell you something i i am an attorney i can't remember yeah. the when the case came down that changed the rules on sort of how you're allowed to do lineups it may have been after 1977 but and when was this 1977 okay but in any event the you can't do things in a lineup that are gonna lead the lead the lead the um witness in one way or the other, even if the police know who they think the, the suspect is because that's what they, there's only one suspect you're the suspect they put you in there and then they bring a bunch of random people in there with the suspect and then they say pick them right but the thing is, is if you do things that indicate to the person who's choosing that help guide. That, that help guide them that that person is a criminal by having him handcuffed and no one else is. Because, because, of course they're going to pick him. Because, That's number one. Because think of it, about it this way. If a female who is claiming uh, grape is under stress, fear, and everything else, and she just wants that person, she wants security to under, to feel like that person is going to be apprehended. And also, on the other end, that the police want to close the case and just be done with it, of where course. they don't have to deal with this. And, that, inc and, and that includes next. the prosecutor. That includes the prosecutor. So when the prosecutor it's said, all rushed. of course. So when the prosecutor said, "Oh, I didn't. We took the picture afterward. I don't fucking believe you. They just want. I the, don't believe you. They just want the person who looks the best for for the for the crime to put them away and close the case. That's it. I don't fucking believe you. You understand me? I don't fucking believe you because you're a police and you motherfuckers can't tell me that no shady shit was going on in the back of a police station in 1977. Don't fucking play with me. Now, second of all, the fact that they're talking about, oh, we knew his name, but yet when you, the police ask you questions, you didn't say the name. Oh, we were afraid. Whenever people say shit like that, I'm like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. You're a fucking liar. Because if you were scared that he would come and get you, you would definitely want to tell the police who he is so they can get his ass. But instead, you do. You, and, and second of all, if you were so scared, why did you tell any part of the story? You told the whole story, but left out his name. And now all of a sudden at trial, now, of course, at trial, you know what his name is because he's the defendant. So now it's, it was Simmons. Suck my dick, you fucking lying ass motherfuckers. And then on top of that, the other statement that these fucking bitches made that that the jury should have been allowed to consider that they weren't is that they said all oh, black people look alike. They couldn't figure out what he looked like. And they said oh, all black people look alike. So so it's fine. Are you fucking joking? Two old racist dusty motherfuckers. They should put you motherfuckers in the fucking ground for 44 years. Let's see how you like that shit. What do you mean? Oh, at least we got 44 years. For what? For what? You may have gotten 44 years, but this man has spent his life innocently in forty in 44 years in jail. And the fact is that this man was innocent. So the person who actually did possibly assault got him, away. if it did happen. Got away. And possibly assaulted another person. Absolutely. This whole, this whole there story. There was no justice sound there. None. This whole story sounds fucking fake. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, this is the way you're telling it, and then I hear one, two, three, four highly persuasive pieces of evidence that were left out of the fucking trial. Is that a joke? What the fuck? And, and you say the man? And No, left out. The jury was not allowed to consider them. Oh. The jury wasn't allowed to consider, for example, those all the things we just said in this video, on top of the fact that the the... The, the medical examiner found no signs of um, sexual assault mm. two weeks later. It's like, and, but but he kidnapped two of you and forcibly did things to y'all the whole night. But are we going to have later? There's, there's no evidence of that. And that wasn't allowed to be considered by the jury. And you want to say that this man had a fair trial? I don't even think anything happened to them at all. They made this whole shit up. I'm talking about they stopped to pray. Suck my fucking dick. Dirty rats. Rat, let me tell you, you rat lying motherfuckers. Just like this lying bitch lying on Jonathan Majors. All these motherfuckers out here telling fucking lies. When we catch you lying, 
And the person, whatever that the person was supposed to get, so they sentenced this nigga to 100 years. He got out in 44. You motherfucker should get 500 years. Get the fuck out of here. The issue is that when women cry wolf, which a lot of women do, um, the real victims they have to get run lost. With, right. And not only that, they have to continuously run with it. Oh, yeah, they, she can't take it, it back now. Right. So you have to, they feed into it and act as if it really did happen. That's as shit if crazy. It, it, it really is a thing. No, seriously, like, it really is a thing. And mentally, they really think that this happened. They got to go with a it. Scenario in I don't believe head. it. I think they're actively shit lying. I'm not giving them no benefit of doubt. Fuck out of here. No, it no. didn't. I don't believe it happened either. No, what I'm saying is that I don't think they believe it happened either. I think oh, they're straight oh, up fucking lying. No fucking just way. Going with it of course they are. When I hear somebody say all oh, black people look alike, that's all I need to hear. You're a, you're a piece of shit. I know you're doing that bullshit. Stop fucking playing with me, cuz. Stop it. Stop it. There's no way. No way, bruh.